All right, kids, let's go take a look and see what's going on. Got a prep table that is warm, not cooling something, I don't know. So let's go find out what's going on. What's up, Norris? What's up, Bill? What's up, Adam? Let's go play. Okay, so it seems to be working now, but we're not sure what exactly the issue was. You can see back there that the TXP looks like it's kind of frosted up pretty good. Not sure if it just can't breathe or what's going on. First thing we're going to do is clean this thing out. That's pretty bad. I gave them a filter for it. To Now they're saying that it wasn't cold at all, which really leads me down the other road here. For it to be warm, not cold at all, means it wasn't running, which means either control or compressor's going out. This thing's been hacked on and put together 10 times again and again, so it's hard to say exactly what it causes it. so we're gonna just investigate here check pressures okay so i pinched it off because i was going to try to salvage the refrigerant charge and put a filter dryer in there with a sight glass on it to utilize that receiver as you can see it pulled down into a negative 21 inch of uh, vacuum so our pressure switch here is junk it's sticking there's no reason it should have been off by 21 pounds so that needs replaced between the sticking low pressure cutout and likely possibly low on refrigerant charge uh, is probably what happened here. So I'm going to uh, probably just recover this thing and change everything out, get it back up and going. It's just uh, kind of a mess here with the way they've got that soldered in there. I wanted to just use a flare dryer sight glass to make it easy figure we could get it in there but since this thing's probably had the issue several times we're just gonna get rid of all of it just we're just gonna recover all the refrigerant start over and fresh
going to turn green there. This is uh, just with the generic manifold, just pulling the old fashioned pump and doing it the way we used to do it for 20, 30 years. So, what uh, we're going to do now is go ahead and charge this juice goose up and see what we can get out of it. See if we got any circulation issues. I went over top of my uh, pinch off tool spot down here and put a little bit of brace around it to reinforce it so that uh, that won't collapse on me later since it's kind of on a weighted spot. And then uh, I'm going to put some rubber in between here and then wire tie these together so they don't bounce.
flashing off. Looking like she might be a little low, but we got her right at factory spec right now. So we were in super mode there, and we were doing some scanning. Went down to this rotolock fitting. And that's with just 57 pounds of pressure on it, 404A. Didn't have any leaks on any of my new fittings. It's good. All right, this is really, really, really bad. That rail is in the, uh, in the, uh, I should say the refrigerant lines are in the rail. And that's not going away. I've never had a, a leak show up in a rail like that before. So we're back to finish up our leak check. With the panels out up here, I didn't get anything up there. But the infamous Randall here has got some oily looking stuff here, which it went off as soon as I went into the container, which you can see here. Here we are on Super. As soon as you come in, she was going nuts. So we go down to low, because I already tried this out. But we come into here. And as soon as we get over here to these solder joints, right here, and right there. Went and doubt the coil is leaking too, so let's go ahead and spray that. Yeah, right here is one. Right there, pretty good size. That'll be easy to fix, I can just reheat that. Looks like I might have a leak back over in that back corner too. Okay, so we're also leaking on this side here, so leaking back here in the back. Leaking back here in the back and leaking up here on the front. So we can remove that bulb there and rebraze those over seal that up but i have a feeling that we probably got leaks in the uh, coil too which is going to be kind of hard to tell with the uh, leak above there so we had a leak down here on this thing too so we're going to remove it and put a new seal in there it's where those short small wrenches come in handy got the o-ring kit here i shouldn't say o-ring but i guess it's an o-ring so yeah we got some little kit here of nylon washers should be able to find one that fits it. There we go.
So we've got that done up. I think that one over there was fine. So we're gonna spray this once we get it pumped up with some nitrogen, pull it around. A little bit of a goober there, but you got a lot of wires in here you gotta watch for. That's why I wire tied the one up. And uh, you know, it's this coil really should probably be replaced. But unfortunately, um, when you got that much leaking going on, it's hard to narrow it down. So we're gonna pump up some nitrogen now and see if we got any leaks. May even get the ultrasonic out. Probably will use the ultrasonic. All right, only place I'm hearing a leak is right down there. Up here, we're good to go. So we fixed three leaks total, but I can hear something down in that area right there. We'll spray it real quick, but chances are that coil needs replaced. And if we do that, probably do a new TXV at the same time. Fringe benefits. I love these people. <sighs> For my business owners out there, a little bribery goes a long way. So, yep, I can see a little bit of a leak. Told you. Right there at the very top. You can see it's down in between the coil there. Yes, sir. Right there at the very top, you should go see the bubbles. Now, granted, that's 200, about 200 pounds, 210 pounds area. So, um, that coil's never going to see that much pressure. So, that's that's going to make it last a lot longer than what it was. We sprayed the top up there. Nothing's leaking in that area. So, I mean, I fought him some time. Obviously, this day and age, things are, you know, tight, man. You know, who knows? They may shut us back down again. So can't make money you can't spend money so that's going to help him out quite a bit at least we found uh, four big leaks so one on the compressor suction uh, line there two on the txv and one on the line coming in feeding the txv so got this done let's go ahead and get this thing vacuum back out and get it recharged so went ahead and sprayed this down to better do while we have our part does not look like we have any leaks on that Went ahead and resprayed my filter dryer and all my connections that I made the last time on that. And they all look good. Alright, I built him a little bracket here. That'll help hold that busted drain pan up for now. If they want to fix it, they can fix it, whatever. Uh, I'll at least keep keep that there and uh, get this all back together so it's time to recharge this thing. Since we didn't have the system open and we used nitrogen with brazen and all that happy jazz, um, I didn't pull out the big gauges, I didn't pull out the big hoses, the Schrader core removal tools, my big vacuum pump, all that crap. I don't do it every time. I mean, when it's under circumstances like this where everything is pretty well dry, not to mention the evaporator's leaking, so it's not like you're going to pull a perfect vacuum anyway, so what's the point? Um, we basically bought them time to put it in all reality here, so getting this thing charged up holds 40 ounces we just put all new refrigerant in it just uh, makes more sense to do that than it is to reuse it okay you see the cycle glass there it's starting to get to the cool mark here Yeah. 